Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told I had a voice for radio, so today I am bringing you round three from the Norwich League Challenge. On the left, we have got Seb Simmons. He is going to be playing Mega Gardevoir. And on the right, we have got Jonathan Ellis. He is going to be playing Rainbow Road, the Zanaeus deck. Both using dual-type Pokemon, both using decks which came around in the latest uh, expansion, Steam Siege, which should be exactly what you guys are looking for if you're watching this video. So, it looks like we've got Jonathan going first here. He's got a Shaman in the active, not ideal, not the best starter you could have, but he does have a Pokemon fan club, which means he can go and get himself a couple of basic Pokemon. So he's going to go and get himself a Zanaeus, and it looks like he's got a Joltik there as well. Joltik evolves into the dual-type Galvantula, which is one of the few dual types that's really, really good for attacking. It's got a nice little attack which hits two bench Pokemon for 30 each, but it gets to hit for weakness as well. And given that it's a dual type, that means you're hitting for a couple different weaknesses. Now, we do see an Ultra Ball coming down here from Jonathan. Might be going for a second Shaman. I mean, honestly, you don't really want to have two Shaman on the feel this early but when you start with a shame in it's you know you've, you've got to get it out of the active and you've got to draw some stuff but clearly confident enough with his hand the way it is at the moment he's gone for a volcanian that is of course the only basic dual type card that we have at the moment and a shall we say a fairly obvious inclusion in a rainbow road deck as a side note, that dual-type Galvantula, not great for um, colorblind people. What with the whole, it's green and yellow. But he does play a Max Elixir there. He does hit a Fairy Energy off of that. Straight onto the Zanaeus. So all he's going to need is a double colorless energy next turn. And he's going to be getting the whole Rainbow Force thing going on. That is one of the problems with that Zanaeus deck is that you do need those two energy attachments. You need the fairy and you need the double colorless. You need both of them going on at once. It is annoying. So you need cards like Max Elixir and maybe the tall EXP share to you know, really get rolling with that, as it were. So, Seb here counting out his hand. Now, Seb is an exceptional player. Um, I should mention that Jonathan there got a very energy onto the Shaman, ready to retreat next turn. He has won, though he's aged up into Masters now, but in Seniors, he, shall we say, he won a lot, got to Worlds regularly, etc. Son of Scott Simmons, who we saw in a previous round. Although, I'm going to be honest, this turn one play here doesn't take... It, it doesn't exactly take a genius to figure out. No, no offense to Seb here. Seb's a lovely chap. I'm pretty sure he'll be watching this video. Hey, Seb. But if you've got a Hooper in hand, you, you play a Hooper. And then you go searching for a couple of Gardevoirs. Now, I've got Seb's list. Seb's list is much more straightforward than your average list here. This is not one... We saw Gardevoir in an earlier round, and we saw that Gardevoir, and it played a whole bunch of text to go on the bench. This Gardevoir is just playing Hooper, Shaman, Gardevoir. There is nothing else here. It's going for consistency. That is it. And now we just see a bit of a count there, trying to figure out how much Rainbow Force is actually going to do here. Now, Rainbow Force gets boosted by the amount of different types you've got on the field, it is 10 damage plus 30 more for each different type of Pokemon on the bench. So we could be seeing five types as it is on the bench at the moment, which would then add up to 160. Not enough to KO a Gardevoir at the moment with 170, but all it would need is a Fighting Fury Belt if he plays it, and he would get the KO. So this could be a big turn from Jonathan here. He needs a Galvantula, he needs a Double Colorless Energy, and he needs a Fighting Fury Belt. There'll be two dual types, one Shaman, five types. Oh. Oh, and that is got nothing there. So he's got to just attach the double colorless energy, go ahead and use Sky Return to get the Shaman back in his hand to use the draw next turn. And that is bad. If he'd had a supporter there, he could have gone DCE on the Xenaeus Retreat. And as long as he finds a Galvantula and a Fighting Fury Belt, or any non 
colorless grass lightning fire or water pokemon and he gets the ko straight away goes up by a couple of prizes that would have been a huge turn one but he wasn't able to hit it now seb's got his mega gardevoir on the bench he's got his gardevoir in the active with an energy attached and now he really is going for this he's got that super rod there just to recover the megas uh, we got a lot of full arts here. Apparently, Seb, not unlike his dad, likes the bling, likes the full arts. And I can't blame him for this. They are pretty cards. The Gardevoir especially has an awesome regular art card. Now, it might look like Seb is shuffling here after a Sycamore, but of course, he played that Super Rod right before he played the Sycamore. So even though it looks weirdly like he's shuffling before drawing seven off a Sycamore, it was a kind of play a Super Rod, play a Sycamore, now I'll shuffle up as if I finish the super rod and then draw the seven cards. A little bit weird, but we, we got the hang of it. Going to be honest, that did throw me for just a second there. So, now, Seb really here just needs that, needs an energy. But he's played his energy for the turn, I believe. So, he's kind of rolling here. All he needs is just to make sure he's streaming those Gardevoirs. Now, he is creating an opening here. There is a possibility that things are going to be done. He's got things to do in the future. Right now, Seb's not under a huge amount of pressure. Now, he does play Mega Turbo in this deck, so there is a possibility here if he's got one. Oh, and he actually plays a Fairy Drop there. Allows him to remove damage counters from a Pokemon that has Fairy Energy attached. That, of course, means a Gardevoir in the active who had the Fairy Energy attached, who had the damage from the Shaman. Now, he gets the Spirit Link here. It's been down a turn, and he even gets the Evolution as well. So, now he's in the active. Oh, he's got Fairy Garden for free retreat there, and it doesn't look like he's got anything going. So, he doesn't have his Mega Turbos. He's got an Energy, and this is, it, it's a conservative start to the game for Seb here, but this is not bad at all. He's got two Mega Gardevoirs. He's got an energy on each. He plays Mega Turbo. He's got energy in the discard. It looks like he's got an energy in his hand there. Now, we do see a trainer's mail from Jonathan getting a Skyfield. I, I can't imagine that's what he wants right now because he needs to draw cards. Now, he's still in a decent position here to get a KO on that Hooper. And... It was a nice play from Seb there, leaving that Hooper in the active. That Hooper can get KO'd. Yes, it gives up two prizes, but it doesn't. It doesn't put Seb in a position where he's got nothing. He's doing all right. He'll lose two prizes, but he can afford to lose a Hooper. This Rainbow Road deck can get one hit KO so quickly that it's just not worth... Oh, and he's got a shame in there, so he's got some cards. Oh, and he's got a Dark Eye and a second Volcania, and he's got the DCE as well. So he's got the... It looks like he's got the KO here. No, he's only hitting 160 at the moment. Oh, but he's got a Ninja Boy. That's all right. At the moment, he's only got five different types on the bench, but if he switches that vol one of those Volcanian for another type, there's the Giratina, the Dragon. Now he's got six different types. Now he's hitting. Um, although, if he doesn't have a second Zeneas, well, it's kind of awkward, because of course that Giratina has invulnerability from the Mega Gardevoir. He can't be hit by Mega Pokemon. Now, clearly Seb's playing a Hex Maniac. Everybody plays Hex Maniac. But this is a risky play from Jonathan here, putting himself in a position where he's unable to have a second Zeneas. Now, we know he plays Max Elixir. We've seen him play Max Elixir. So, of course, there is every possibility next turn. He goes Zeneas, Max Elixir, double colorless, retreat, whatever happens to be in the active. But that's asking a lot in one turn now he is end by Seb here and you might be thinking well hang on a second why Seb going for an N well he wants to get a KO here yes he's refreshing Jonathan's hand and that is oh there's the mega turbo we were talking about you don't want to refresh your opponent's hand when you know they're not playing supporters but that Zeneas there has 120 HP 
Oh, he's getting the KO anyway, sorry. I was thinking it had 130. So if he discards one benched Pokemon, he will get the KO with Despair Ray here. Clearly, he's going to discard one of those Shaman, and then he's got the KO straight away. And I think his thought process, because there, there was an argument there to go right. I'm just going to get the KO. I know my opponent has nothing. I don't need to play the end. I'm going to get the KO. And Seb went for the end there. And arguably, you could say, a little bit too aggressive, didn't need to play the end. And there's the discarding of the Shaman to do 120 with Despair, Ray. Eh? But the other thing Seb could be thinking is, you know what? I've got the KO here. He doesn't have another Zeneas ready to go. So if I just keep building up my board, building up my Gardevoirs, if I get a suite of Gardevoirs ready to go, what's he going to do? Now, the beautiful thing here, of course, is, oh, and he's got nothing. Jonathan is not drawing well in this game at all. He just literally drew past. So that end did nothing for Jonathan whatsoever. Now, he has left a... He has left a Giratina in the active. And, of course, Giratina's ability gives it invulnerability from Mega Pokemon. So there will be no Despair Ray against Giratina this turn. Now, Seb's deck doesn't go for big one-hit KOs. Seb's deck goes for two hit KOs of the X's, one hit KOs of non X's, while healing with things like Fairy Drop. You're not playing enough. You're not playing enough Pokemon. There's only Shaman and Hooper. There's no Skyfield here. He's clearly playing Fairy Garden. There's no putting huge amounts of Pokemon out here, there, and everywhere. So he's quite content here to just play along. Now, he will need a Hex Maniac to get the attack. But he can afford to just Lysander around it. Get some cheeky KOs. Now, it's going to take a while to get all of these KOs, of course. If he's two-hit KOing, it's going to take a little while. But Honestly, it doesn't matter if Seb attacks this turn. That Giratina's not doing anything. Jonathan has no energy on his side of the field. So Seb can just build up his Gardevoirs and just Lysander around. If a uh, Xerneas goes down, he Lysanders and KOs. Yeah, that Giratina's a little bit of a pain. But as it stands at the moment, there's not going to be any, you know, imminent threat. And if Seb were to play a Lysander, there is a decent chance he could get a cheeky two-hit KO on one of those EXs on the bench. Let's not forget that Despair Ray will actually get a one-hit KO on Shaman. There is the Lysander on the Shaman, and now we get Despair Ray for 110, taking out that Shaman. Never mind. And this really does seem to be going down to a very quick conclusion. Now, one thing that Jonathan could try doing here is he could try and use that Galvantula using double Fred. He could do 60 to each of those Shaman and get four prizes in two turns and win the game. But of course, all Despair Aid does is stop the effects on Giratina. So, Scott... Oh, sorry, Seb, if he wanted to, could just discard both those Shaman next turn. Attack the Giratina, not do any damage, but discard both the Shaman. Of course, if the Galvantula attacks, he'll do 60 to each Shaman, and then Seb just KOs it. So maybe if Jonathan gets a second Joltik down, he could work on a two-turn Joltik uh, Galvantula double Shaman KO. But of course, that's a moot point anyway, because as soon as he tries that, Seb is just going to despair Ray and discard both of his Shaman, even if he doesn't need to, take away those KOs. Against a lot of decks, that would be a really sound play. Not happening here. So, now we do see another Zeneas coming down. He's got the DCE. Does he have a Max Elixir? He's got a Shaman. Now, it's going to take quite a few Pokemon. The Omega Gardevoir there has got 210 HP, which means you'll need seven different types. Now, as it stands... Oh, he's got seven different types. It's a moot point, because he didn't have... Oh, and there's a Lysander. And this is what Seb was always going to do. Had he had a Max Elixir and a way to get the Zeneas in the active, he's got two dual types, three regular types. He could have actually got the KO there. But he didn't. 
so he doesn't. We see another super odd from Seb. As I've said, he's gone pure full bore consistency. And you can't blame him. It's running so much nicer than the Zanaeus deck we saw in, I believe it was round two? In one of the earlier rounds, we saw a Gardevoir deck, sorry. And it ran a bit clunkily. And what Seb's doing here is just going, you know what? I am just going to set up. Okay, I'm only doing 110, 120 a turn. That's a little bit upsetting. But I'm going to be doing 110, 120 every single turn. And look at where he is in the game now. He's got three Mega Gardevoirs, all with the requisite two energy to attack. He's got two prizes remaining, while Jonathan has no energy on the board. Sooner or later, Seb is going to draw into a... Lysander or Versus Seeker for a Lysander, at which point that Shaman gets dragged into the active and KO'd, and that's the game. And you've got to wonder what it is exactly that Jonathan can do here. If he could attack with the Giratina, maybe he gets off enough attacks that he can actually get the KO. But it's not looking terribly likely. Now, one thing that also <laughs> needs to be borne in mind here is that that Giratina is weak to Fairy. Which means there will be... I don't think I said this earlier, but if I did, consider this my apology. There will be no two-hit KO from Mega Gardevoir on Giratina. Mega Gardevoir is dual-type Fairy and Psychic. Giratina is weak to Fairy. So, the second, even if, you know, Seb doesn't even need to hit a Lysander here, he could actually just hit a Hex Maniac, turn off Giratina's ability, which would then allow him to attack into the Giratina, he would hit for 220 without discarding any bench Pokemon, and that would be the game. And there is an argument here, and it's a discussion we don't really have time for in this video, but there is a discussion here of what is the best way to go about playing Gardevoir. And there we go, we see the concession there. Um, or a Lysander. Seb wins the game, and it was just consistency there. Rainbow Road can beat Gardevoir. It really can. The problem is, Rainbow Road can beat Gardevoir when it's one hit KOing EXs, when it has a Zanaeus every turn. You saw early game, there was that turn Jonathan could have wrecked the setup. Well, not wrecked the setup, but he could have taken out the Gardevoir and got himself in a good position early game. He was unable to do so. He couldn't stream Zanaeuses, and off we went. There is an argument, ladies and gentlemen, when playing Pokemon, that just playing a consistent deck that sets up is a good play. Because you know what? There will be unfavorable games where you just win because you set up and your opponent doesn't. Now, if you want me to do an analysis of Seb's deck, I have both a deck list and permission to do so. So if you want an analysis of Seb's deck, hit me up. Put it in the comments. If I get enough people asking, I will do an analysis in the next day or two just for you lovely ladies and gentlemen. I will go there if you want me to. Usual rules apply. Comment, like, subscribe. Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.